Um, I want to talk to you something that God placed in my heart, but I want to start with this. One of my favorite jokes about fathers. One day, a mother, a woman, um, made the mistake of leaving her baby daughter and her husband's care while she was busy doing some work in another room. He right away got distracted reading his newspaper and forgot all about the baby until he heard a couple of strong noises followed by a horrendous cry. Uh, uh, was crying the baby. Instantly he knew that the baby had fallen down the stairs. He knew he was going to get in trouble. So he called, out his, he called out his wife and said, Honey, honey, come quick. Our little girl just took her first 24 steps coming down the steps. That's not right, right? But that sounds like a father, am I right? Trying to fix the problem as much as he can or as soon as he can. You know, ay, ay, ay. What I'm going to talk today is directly to the fathers. But you need to understand that every word that I'm going to speak today is for every young person and for every woman also sitting in here. Because what I'm going to talk, it involves or it goes around understanding the heart of God. You need to know the heart of God. Because in order to become a better Christian, a better person, you need to know the heart of God. But first I would like to start with something kind of funny. We as fathers... Uh, and I include myself. We are interesting creatures. Let me know what I'm talking about. I, I know we're interesting. Here are the top 10 things you will never hear that say. You see, they would never say this. I know for a fact. I probably would never say this. Number 10. Drum roll, please. Everybody, drum roll, drum roll. And your leg and your feet going over there. Number 10. Whoosh. Well... How about that? I'm lost. Looks like we all have to stop and ask for directions. <laughs> you will never hear of that saying that, right? Number nine. Drum roll, please. Whoosh, attention. I like the effect. Whoosh, all right? You know, pumpkin, now that you are 13, you will be ready for and chaperone, on chaperone net, or whatever say, like, without supervision, car dates, wouldn't that be fun from now on? Will you hear any dad saying that to a 13-year-old? I don't think so. I got the shotgun next to me right now. <laughs> Number eight. Drum roll, please. <laughs> I noticed that all your friends have a certain hostile attitude. I like that attitude. <laughs> no, right? Number seven. Drum roll, please. <laughs> Here is a credit card and the keys of my new car. Go and get crazy. No? Any parent will say that? I don't think so. All right, number six. Drama, please. I'm just going to go with five. Why do you mean you want to play football? Figure skating not good enough for you, son? Drummer, please, number five. And the last one of the day. I'm just going to do that one. Honey, your mother and I are going away for the weekend. You may want to consider to throw a party in the night. Yes or no? Obviously not. You know, there has been always a need, a great need for dads in this earth. You have no idea that how important is your role in this life, in this society. We may think that they are weird by the things they wear or the lack of emotion some they have, but they are essential in our homes today and in our society. You need to understand one thing that is very critical. Did you know that when it comes Mother's Day, around the world, and especially in the American society, Listen to me. People spend billions of dollars on gifts for Mother's Day. But and then it comes Father's Day, and they don't even spend the 10% on Father's Day. And you know what? That is the reason for. This society 
through the generations is being attacked by the enemy. I don't want nobody going like that. I don't want nobody putting yourself in the back. I'm not going to repeat that. Not now, not next week. Everybody sit properly. Thank you. Nobody. Okay? It's a privilege to be in this church. How many believe it's a privilege to be in this church? We're changing a lot of things as we're moving forward. How many say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Amen. Listen, the society is being attacked since the beginning by the enemy trying to distort or to, to destroy the real image of a good father. You see, God himself don't call himself the mother of all creation. I don't minimize that special love of a mother, but God himself is called by himself the father of all creation. You need to understand that there is no greater, listen, love, according to the word of God, that the love combined of a father, a good father, and a good mother. But what I'm saying is, this society says that the love of the mother is stronger than the love of the father. Then God would not call himself a father. He would be a mother. The love of God is perfect. How many say it's perfect? Yes or no? So what I'm saying is, is that according to the kingdom of God, there is also no stronger love than the love of the father. But because the fathers have not taken their place through the generations, that's why the image is lost. But it's not according to God. I need you to understand how important it is that you and me, we take our places in this society. The less we take our place, the more crazy it's getting or it's going to get this society. I have no idea the impact that a father has. Obviously, as it is a tremendous impact in the positive. There is also tremendous impact in the negative. That's why the enemy knows this. I know that I'm talking to a crowd that lives in Brooklyn, New York. I know that probably 75% of you grew up without a father, without somebody. Maybe you are a foster care, foster child. You went, you were a foster child. I know that you don't have the image of someone that was standing next to you. But you know what? Let's see what the Bible talks or tells us about what is to become a great dad. Because you need to understand that you no longer can hold on to your past in order to live your future. Listen to me. I'm tired of hearing people in this society say, I am the way I am because that's the way my father was. I don't know how to love because my father never taught me how to love. I don't know how to correct somebody. I don't know. Why? Because they are standing still. Look at me. Supporting themselves in the past. Let me give you, and I knew as I get this, that it was going to be used in one point, and it's today that I'm going to use it. How many of you know that two weeks ago, I received a full surgery, two surgeries in my life? Actually, it's only two weeks. This is the 16th day. Can we give glory to God? Look at me where I'm standing. By the grace of God. Amen? But the first, since the first day, I used a cane to walk. Because I felt pain in my body. Okay, first of all, Pastor Tony said that you should never use a cane. No, I'm, t I'm just giving you an illustration, people, okay? Sometimes you take absolutes of everything that I said. But I was in pain the last two weeks. So every moment I needed to walk now, after two weeks only, you know, for long distance. But right now, you see, I'm using this cane to what? To produce what? what support say with me what support you need to understand that i'm still holding to this cane you're not you're not paying attention are you looking at me right now i said you need to look at me everybody look at me are you getting this i'm using the cane to support my walk many of you listen and learn this please once you need to understand how many of you notice that i walk here without the cane i need it still but why I walk without the cane? Because I know that if I keep depending on this cane, 
I'm going to keep feeling comfortable. It's going to start to be my body. I'm going to start to, you know what, to get used to, to do some tricks with it. And you know what? It's good to walk in the neighborhood. How many know what I'm talking about? So I'm going to get used to it, and I'm going to walk with it. And you know what? Soon it's going to be part of me. That's what has been happening with your pain. You're leaning in your pain to live your life. The way I walk to this place, that's how you have to live life. Let go the past and move forward with the blessings of God. Come on, you better give a hand clap to God. Let go the pain. Come on, you better give a hand clap to God. Well, you don't understand. Let go the pain and adopt the kingdom of God mentality and know that God loves you. Amen? What God talks to us about being a great father, because you say, I'm never going to be a great father. I'm standing here, and every statistic will say that I was going to fail as a father. But I stick to the word of God, and by the grace of God, I'm trying to do my best. But what the Bible talks, or what the Bible teaches in order to be a good father, number one, a great dad loves his children. Psalm 103, 13 says, As a father has compassion on his children. The word compassion is a word that means to love deeply. Or, I mean profoundly. Dads are to cherish and nature their children. Moms, you aren't off the hook. You are all to love your kids too. But far too many dads aren't doing this. They say, is the job of the mama? No. According to the word of God, it's our job. It's interesting how the Bible many times only count the man and not the woman. It's not that God is minimizing the woman, but it's trying to say it's the man's responsibility to show love and teach the love of God in your family. Now, how can I love my kids, look at me, if I don't love myself? Understand? That's why I need to come closer to God because I'm going to come closer. You're not, you're not listening, my friends. The closer I get to God, the closer I'm going to understand His love, and the closer I'm going to start to love myself according to what God says. Are you with me? Now, what's the second thing? A great dad, number two, is fair to his children. It's fair. Ephesians 6, 4 says, And now a word to the fathers. Or to you fathers, don't make your children angry by the way you treat them. I love the NIV translation that says, do not exasperate your children. Don't wear them down or don't wear them out. Don't nag them. Don't make them hostile. Treat them them fairly. But that doesn't mean you don't discipline them. You need to understand that you just don't unfair, unfairly punish them be responsible children that doesn't give you the right well the bible says you're not supposed to treat me wrong you cannot discipline me no 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 actually the bible says that if you love your children you must what discipline them look at me but what it's saying that is that you have to be fair how many believe that many times moms and dads look at me yes or no because we have the authority in home sometimes we feel that we have the right to press certain buttons to our children come on yes or no well i'm the one in charge of this house and we press the button yes or no you can you gotta treat them fair one of the things that i love about my son is that he's very outspoken he never talks he never answers he's a great kid god is doing i mean by his grace many blessings in our home but there is a moment when he speaks you want to know when? When I cross the line. When I'm pressing a button. Oh no, you didn't, Pastor Tony. You must be perfect. Thank you very much. <sighs> Nobody's perfect. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. And sometimes in the, in, the, in the heat of life, are you with me? I press the wrong button and my son says, Dad. Say, and I say, what? He says, Ephesians 6 4, Dad. Ephesians 6 4, Dad. And I say, Okay, son, okay. You know, number three, what it takes to be a great dad. Anybody wants to know what it is to be a great dad? Yes. Any young people dream to be a great dad? 
you, I was Christian already. You know, I wasn't Christian, but once I became Christian, I dreamed to be a good dad. I said, God, you got to help me. So every time somebody was teaching something like this, I was paying attention for my time. Number three, a great dad takes the time to train and instruct or to bring instruction to his children. He says that it takes time. Nothing, okay, listen to me. Nothing is a substitute of a spending quality time with your loved ones. And I'm going to be more closer to the reality in this place. Some of you are in your second or third marriage. God bless you, whatever you are. But that doesn't mean that you stop being a father for the kids in your first marriage. You still have to spend time with them. You fail as a couple. Don't fail as a father. They need you. You're going to praise God. You better do it now. They're not clapping very much for this one. You have to take time. Look at what it says, the rest of Ephesians 6.4. It says, rather bring them up with the discipline. Another way, help them to grow up with the discipline and instruction approved by the Lord. That's not how mama used to do with me. Why do you hit me with that? Because mama used to hit me with that. Now I'm hitting you with that. You guys know what is the chancla? How many, guys, how many guys don't know what is the chancla? You know, it's the, it's the famous leper. You know what I mean? It's the Puerto Rican, Dominican, or whatever you want to call. Best way to discipline the children. Somebody, how many remember we were growing up as a children, right? And you were doing something, and shoo, the chancla would fly. You know, if you were close, they would go pow, right? How many know what I'm talking about? But if you were not close, oh, man, pow, 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 right? And it, because they had like a little cushion, how I many you know what I'm talking about? They think this is not gonna hurt him. It was the famous Shankla. Listen, according to the word of God, we gotta let go once we become Christians, the famous Shankla. You gotta let it die, my friends. How I many you know what I'm talking about? Yes or no? See, according to the word of God, there is a way to discipline our children. Whoa, 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 what's the way? Buddha, read the word of God. It is very clear. There is, listen. Hundreds of proverbs that it teach us how to discipline our children. You need to do it. You need to be. Listen, some dads, you know what is the problem with dads? They're very phlegmatic, many of them. Not all of them. But it means like it's time to bring discipline. But they come home tired. And they say, nah, I don't know what I'm talking about. They fail by not disciplining. But the word of God says that if we love our children, we must discipline them. You know, as my children were growing up, I realized that they were trying to say, can you love me with discipline? And you know what? They even would do something to get my attention. How many know what I'm talking about? It was someone like, you're not paying attention to me. I'm going to get your attention even in the wrong way. How many know what I'm talking about? They were saying, can you? It's almost like I need a discipline. But see, I learned to discipline according to God. I will never react. First, I will make sure that they understand why I'm disciplining them. Then, I will give them time to understand. Then, God provide a nice muscle. <laughs> How many know what I'm talking about? And then, the word of God says, literally, with the rod. With the what? Literally. So, we got this Christian thing that says, discipline your kids if you love them. They even sell them. We don't sell them. We need to sell some of them. No, I'm just kidding. But... Well, now come in Latin America, a little tiny with the bears in there. Act in anger. Number two, I let them understand. Go to your room and understand what has happened. Two, once I discipline, I discipline not like 20 things, only three things. Simple rules. Some of you got like 25 rules for your kids of two only years old. No. Then, once I discipline, it was not to hurt them. Are you with me? The next thing, watch me here. The next thing, once I discipline them, I say, cry, you deserve that. No. Now it was time to minister them in love. I will grab them in my arms, hug them and pray. And I say, and sometimes cry with them because as a father, you cry when your children cry. How many know what I'm talking about? We cry since they were little. Now we cry when they're adults making wrong decisions. How many know what I'm talking about? Moms and dads, right? But I pray for them. We both cry. And then, the, you know what? I knew 
It was a perfect discipline. Once my kid said, thank you, dad, for discipline me. I'm, I'm a bad person, but I'm going to do better. How many know what I'm talking about, right? Then I say, it's worth it. Let's get up and do something. But you know what? It works. It works because you know what? How many of you have seen some kids going to the mall and then, Mommy, I want that. And Mommy said, no, I can And then they go to the floor and they make a show. How many know what I'm talking about? And wah, wah. Anybody here? Anybody here? And wah. not, listen, listen, I'm not bragging, but not once happened on my wash. Not once. I never experienced that. So when I see that, and uh, you, how many know what I'm talking about? And now we live in a new era, right? That is like, don't talk to them. Don't give them papa. And the kid making a mess, being rebellious and everything. Talk to them. Carlos, breathe. Count one, two, three. How many know what I'm talking about? I remember when my kid, my friends, was about two years old. And I was turning like two, three. We were in a mall. And you know what? It was the only time my boy wanted to, you know, Give me a show. And for a second, he was going to, eh, I want this. I, I got flashbacks of that. All right? And he said, I, I want it. And when he said that, I, I was in the mall. And there were cops in front of me. Okay? He was like, he is smart, some little, little kid. Now, what are you going to do now, dad? And I am. What? And the cops are here. You know what? I say, you know what? I don't understand what this society is going through. But you know what? I'm a man of God and I'm going to do what the Bible says. And I said, you boy, come over here. Uh, you know what you're doing? And pow, pow, pow. Not, not a lot. When I did that, people, my wife, oh, the cops, the cops. You know, like, well, they're going to say something, right? They, they didn't see me abusing the kid. I told did it in love. So when I passed by, you know what the cops say? Hey, respect, 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 brother. I don't know if he was Christian or not, but respect, 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 respect. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we are so intimidated to bring discipline to our children because we live in a society that this is right, this is wrong. This is the truth, my friends. We have to stand. You're going to praise God. You better praise God right now. We are in a mess because nobody's taking their place. That's moms, you got to take your place. Well, my children is now 35 years old. Now is when he needs you the most. As I get older, I need my dad more. Now he's not alive. But I've been blessed with a stepfather. And he's a great man of God. I need them. I need them around me. We hear, hear what it says. Instruct them approved by the Lord. What kind of instruction? You want to know what kind of instruction your kids need? Well, they're in university. It doesn't matter. Do it now. Moral and a spiritual instruction. Instruction. A better way to say this, it's time to teach them absolute or absolute truth. Right from wrong, good and evil, heaven and hell, morality against immorality. Nobody's standing saying that is wrong. That is wrong. Nobody wants to talk about hell. Oh, my kids know about hell. And it's not going, listen, to my mother-in-law. I'm just man. Okay, nobody got the joke. Okay, <laughs> I'm just kidding. See, no, that's not. That's not. They know that there is consequences if they live in this life not according to God. You and me, we need to teach truth. Everybody comes to church. Give me the ten steps to be more rich. Give me five steps to I can lose weight and I feel better about myself, brother. It's going to take you about 20 and it's still not going to get better. Nobody wants to talk about hell and heaven. Well, my friends, there is a hell waiting for those that are rejecting the word of God and God himself and earth. But it's also a precious heaven and a great eternity next to our father of fatherlands. Oh, my God. You better give a hand clap to God. Amen. For all of those that will live according to God. Amen. We need to teach morality against immorality. My friends, does this mean that we are supposed to have the sex talk with our children? Well, does God have a purpose and plan when it comes to sex? Then teach it to your children. Don't let the world shape your children. views on sex. Let God's word do that. I marriage somebody. Not I marriage somebody. I pronounce 
a wedding this Friday. Was Friday? This Friday in New Jersey, a beautiful wedding. Sanita's wedding and Katab's wedding. But they did it in a university. My friend says, you don't invest your time now. Look at me now. Young people learn. Once your children go to the university, they're going to get so many influences from any direction that it's going to be probably too late. I'm walking in the hallways of this university and it's very clear. Big posters. It doesn't matter with who you get married as long as you love. How many know what I'm talking about? Promoting the gay marriage and promoting all this kind of stuff. Well, the Bible of God is very clear. The word of God is still very clear. It was Adam and Eve, never a Steve. And then you, I'm going to know what I'm talking about, my friends. So we need to stand for absolute truth. We need to tell them this is right, this is wrong. My friends, they don't know. There is a generation right now that cannot distinguish from right and left. Because they had no fatherly influence in their lives who love them, treat them fairly, and taught them the right from the wrong. We need to stand. We need to stand and tell them. One of the greatest characteristics I love most about God. Do you know which one is? Is that he called himself the father. In other words, he is my father. You and me both, we have an early father, but a heavenly father. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about that. Amen. Here are some truths about God being our father. Because you say a few minutes ago, I, I, I never had a father. You know what? I do understand something about that. There was a divorce when I was seven years old in my family. So I grew up as a teenager, as a young man without a father. And usually as they fail with their couples, they start to fail also with their children. But here's my teaching. I thought I was not going to make it. But I realized the first thing when I came to Christ is that Jesus, that God was my father. Amen? One of the greatest nature of God is that he's a father. A father of what? Well, number one, the Bible says that he will always be around. How many of you want to have a father that is always around? Huh? Look at what it says. That he's a wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father amen everlasting father he's not going anywhere our father will be always around and that brings me so much hope also one of the characteristics of father is that he called himself the father to the fatherless and the defender of the widows look at what it says psalm 68 it says father to the fatherless defender of the widows you know that 10 times in the bible it says fatherless or orphan and he's the father of those ten times how many times right. do you think it's important absolutely I want you to know this you have a great father this church look at me not only the fathers and the mothers but any mentor I have a lot of servants of God in this place that you have end up like a mentor for other people you need to show the truths of the Word of God now if you've been entrusted as a mentor as a tutor you have to do it now for the young people. And young people, here is your best tutor of life. So many are growing up saying, oh, I got nobody to coach me. I got nobody that helps me. Here is your help. My friends, we need to embrace the love of God. He loves us so, so much. I want that you see this video. It's going to help you to see uh, that our kids love us. And we need to know that we are creating an impact. It's positive or negative. It's up to you. Please see this video right now. Dad, mom, you are as big as Henry. You are as fluffy as a clown. You are as fluffy as a clown. I love you, Henry. That was my daughter in school. You saw that? She thinks that I'm fluffy. I saw that and I felt to say, ah, oh, and I felt to like, ah, oh, and I'm just kidding, okay? But she says, you're fluffy like a clown. 
You know, and I love it. But you know what? For her, it is very critical. It is very important. Very, very important. The way I treat her on a daily basis. It's so important. The impact that we are creating, it is a tremendous impact in their lives. I wonder you please right now, pay attention to this reading. I asked my wife to live the lies like that. Thank you. Please, I know you're playing discoteca, whatever you're doing in the past, one thing after another, and they keep smiling. <laughs> but the truth is, I need that you pay attention to this part. As the musicians, please get ready. Don't stay in the middle. Complete the task. And I want that you please pay attention to this that my wife is going to read. I could not read it in the first service, and I don't want to read it now. But this was something that was giving a task to my son that now he's in high school and um, they ask him to f write a report about a thing or a person or the, the, the thing that has or the person that has influenced you the most in life. Greatest influence. Many people have greatly influenced my life, but most of all it has to be my dad. Ever since I was little, he had always implied that God is above all else. As, I'm, as a man of God, he has shown me how uh, privileged I am to be a Christian and also a pastor's kid. Going along with salvation, he has also shown me to go for my dreams and goals and never give up. When I was a little kid, and even to this day, he has pushed me to the limits with sports. Because of him, I'm, I can play football, baseball, basketball, swimming, racquetball, etc. When I was born, I came out really sick, and the doctor said I was, I was most likely to die. I had a blood disease, a hole in my heart the size of a quarter. My spinal cord was unarranged, and one of my lungs uh, of, of mine was deformed. So as you can see, the moment I was born, I was sure to die. But some doctors forget that there's a man upstairs always in control. So even though my father was aware of sickness, he prayed and prayed and trusted in God. And through all this, he still had to go preach because it was his job and people needed to hear from him. After two months, my father was in the hospital one night and the doctor said, Mr. Lara, come, come. But my father was afraid that they were uh, going to show him his dead son. So he said, no, no, please, no. But the doctors were saying, no, come, we don't understand. But... Your son is healed from night to day, and, that, and at that moment, he knew it was on an answer prayer. When he told me my testimony, he said, son, never lose your faith in God. So because of that moment in what he said, I know, and I knew that no matter what, I always have to keep my faith in God. God, we thank you that you are our father. You are our father that have carried us in your shoulders when you carry the cross you carry the pain and the cross because you were trying to make us walk in a different path just like the video that we see the father helping his son you help us God, every day to walk in a better way and for that we are grateful pray with me and say God I thank you for your precious son dying in the cross for me thank you that you are my father and I can be secure. I give you my life. Say with me from this day on. I love you, Jesus. 